Hey, we got a guest. I'm just gonna. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen. Come on in. Yeah, can can you see? You just took the. Yeah. Just took your legs. <laughs> what's, what's, what's wrong with having Alpha no. in my lap? Oh no. Can you guys see Alessandro? There you are. Yeah. All right. So um, I, I don't know if if you, if you guys know Alessandro. There's a little delay. Um, but if you if you tuned in around uh, our South by Southwest coverage, then you, then you certainly do. Um, tell them tell them about what you're up to. Well, right now we're very close to releasing the new record, which is uh, next week. Okay, and tell them where they well there you go. Tell them where uh, they can go to get uh, it. The website is s o n o i o dot org, so sonoio dot org, and uh, it's a nonprofit organization. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. For now. Sort of. <laughs> no, sort of. I mean, I guess yeah. Uh, but uh, so it's very exciting because it's the second campaign, and uh, you actually can see some of the tell products me, of, of the grant. Tell us about the award. Tell us about the, the music. Tell us about the music. Well, the music is you know it's, it's, it's funny that you say that. That's the first thing you ask because most of the time people ask about the campaign and how right. that went and how what are you well, doing yeah, this time to make it interesting. No, but, yeah, you and I started. That's why I, I'll tell you like you and I started when we started talking about the record, it really was all about the music. You were talking yeah. about how you were making it, about the real... Yeah, definitely. The keyboard you're using is basically a museum piece. Yeah, exactly. It's an so. old synth from the 70s. You know, most of the music, even for this album, was written on one of those. Simply because I do enjoy the fact that it's a little different from using, like, everything that you can use nowadays. You know, yeah. you go into Guitar Center, 30, you know, 300 bucks, and you have a studio at home. Yeah. And to me, if I have all these tools, I usually end up just... You know, playing the PS3 and going and doing nothing. If I have a you know a thousand options, and uh, so the plan was you know to do a second part as opposed to doing a main a main record, a long one, say 15 tracks. My plan was to do sh shorter records, right. simply because it's always been difficult for me to to feel like if I worked on a group of say 10 or 15 songs that I'd be dis attached to the first song as much as I was to the last one that I worked on. Usually the last stuff I work on is the one I'm more attached to. Right. So I realized that my comfort zone is always something between an EP and a full record, which has never been easy to do. Because yeah. you try to shop it and people are like, well, we like more. And then once you have a collection of songs to which you're not that attached to anyway, because some of them are old, two years old, and the others you just wrote. Yeah. Everybody's like, oh, or the label's like, well, yeah, let me try, you know, and see how this works. Maybe a year from now we'll release. And this is actually relevant to what we were talking about when you walked in, which is, because um, I was thinking somebody asked a question about, you know, when will someone release, uh, you know, take a take a gigantic artist and do something really non-traditional is kind of the essence of the question. And then I just listened last night to Michael Branvold's podcast where he read the recent Bob Lefsetz piece, which was all about, I don't know if you guys saw it, but Lefsetz wrote this piece about stop releasing albums. Mm -hmm. That was effectively what it was. It was like, stop, like, like thinking, stop thinking in 60 minute chunks. Right? Yeah. Like, and so it sounds to me, I, I like what, the way you put it too, is like you just said that, that you've, you're, sort of, you're recording in this way that, that you're, you're kind of, the, the the bounds of the package are kind of what feels natural to you yeah. instead of something that feels unnatural. Like yeah, I assume exactly. like just releasing a song, it's not like the, the Sonoyo is going to be like, here's my new hit song. Yeah. But you're also saying, like, oh, I'm not really thinking of it in terms of like a 45 to 72 minute album. Yeah, well, it might happen. You know, right now it just seems like I got into this groove where basically I'd like to invert the, the old process of releasing a full record and tour for two years or something like that. I'd yeah. rather do few shows, but in a year I'm going to give you three records, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then different packages, but it's going to be a lot of music, short enough for you to want to be playing it again and listen to it again yeah. until the next one comes out. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So how many records, I mean, I love that you know are short, and the only way to fulfill that need is to listen again, which is as easy as just pressing play again. It's not yeah. like, oh man, it's short, you know what, just listen to it again. And I, I think, I think, yeah, and I think, I thought you, I don't know if you guys have heard the first Sonoya record, but it's, it's really good. I have. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I like it, you know, and, and so, um, cool, man. Well, I'm I'm excited. So, Monday. Me too? Yeah, well, Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay. Yeah, Monday is a holiday. A holiday, we'll yeah, like yeah, to keep yeah. it that way for everyone. But, <laughs> right. so Tuesday. but Tuesday, back to work, which back means buying work. your record. Yeah, All everybody right. back to work and then invest some money. <laughs> and so, wait, are you doing more, more synths with this one too? Yeah, there's going to be another edition, a little bit upgraded. So, tell people about one. that. So, this is the craziest thing. So, um, Alessandro actually fabricated a synthesizer, which yeah. you can buy along with his record. And I mean, it's 
it's pretty awesome. I saw like a Wayne playing with it at the. I don't yeah, have one. I, it, I, it, it went I saw Wayne playing well, with one at the thing. You know, it's pretty cool. It's, uh, well, the idea was to come up with something that was halfway between a gimmick, if you want. I mean, technically speaking, it is a, it is a gimmick, right. emotionally wise, but yeah. something that had a little bit more of a meaning to it. And uh, I've always been associated with synths because of my previous work with Nine Inch Nails, and I didn't just want to release a synthesizer because. Yeah. And I didn't want to release uh, a sample player with samples from the album just because that seemed some, you know, too simple. So the idea was to come up with a cross between the two, so something that was uh, strictly linked to the recording, to the record, but that it would allow you to be creative and not thinking, oh man, it's just you know this drum loop from track one. Right. So we came up with the Suono Ear, which is basically an instrument that takes the sounds from the record, little samples, like you would use waveforms, and use those as starting points. And I've, I mean, I've heard it, used live by people, you know, like, wow. uh, especially up in the Bay Area, obviously, you yeah. know, where, where I played some shows with experimental musicians, and they're using it, I mean, that's awesome, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's sort of like using, like, I saw, I remember the first time I saw somebody who had a chaosolator on stage, Yeah. and I was like, wow, that's so cool, because it's such a simple little instrument, Yeah. but you can really get a lot of, a lot and, of and, power yeah, exactly, the of, other thing of, was, know, we didn't creativity. want it to look or be a uh, slave to the rules of syn synthesis, where you sort of expect or you're expected to know what you're doing. Right. I mean, to me, we uh, we succeeded in coming up with a product that is just as useful and exciting for somebody who has everything, as far as musicians. Right. You know? yeah, yeah. And somebody who just wants, just wants to keep it on a coffee table and show it to friends. And when so they does walk the new in, one have you know? that panel over the top? Yeah. Of it? The new one has a faceplate, and right. there's going to be an upgrade package at a special price for the people who bought the previous one so they can just get the faceplate in their choice of color. That's awesome. And with extra cables and whatnot. And uh, so the new one is going to have samples from, you know, the new record. And there's going to be, as I said, an upgrade package for the older one that will have a faceplate, a chip with the new sound. So if you want to switch between the two editions, you can. Right. And, uh, yeah. Awesome. I'm gonna. I'm buying one this time. I'm glad I waited till version two. There's a. Yeah, there's a. Look, you know, it's. A, we're happy that we're able to do version two. Yeah. Oh man. Well, so I, so I have. Experiment. I have a, just a final question for you. you know, I was surprised. Like I, 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 um, for the class that we do at UCLA, I reached out to you mm -hmm. because I was using you as an example of 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 an artist. You know, really coming. You know, because we always get the question like, oh, this shit works for you know David Byrne. How does it work for you know someone like Alessandro? So I, um, I reached out to you and I said, you know, hey, I'm pulling these slides together. I'm curious, like, how much of your revenue, you know, you sell on TuneCore, yeah. right? How much of your revenue is topspin versus that? And I was surprised by your answer. Yeah, it was like a very short, I can't remember, something between 5 to 7, or like 3 to 5% or something yeah, like that. I mean, getting, yeah. yeah, I can't remember exactly. But 3 to 5% is not topspin. Yeah, exactly. It's anything coming from TuneCore. So, I mean, let's say just Amazon and, and iTunes. You know, and the, the thing ones. that surprised me most that you shared with me is that you said you, know, you sell more digital tracks even direct from your website than you do from iTunes. Oh, yeah, for sure. Definitely. Which I think is so interesting because for me, you know, we often think about like, well, okay, top spin's for the synth. You know what I mean? Like yeah. It's for the poster. Or for the physical. For the yeah, people think it's for the physical. But then you forget about the options in the digital realm of things. Yeah. Where you can actually choose... Uh, the quality, you know, the, the resolution of the files. Sometimes the other thing is that if you buy from the website, you get extras. You know, right. you get the, the pre, just like for the first record, this record, you'll get the demos, which is something I've always been very attached to. You know, right. Like bootlegs and demo versions yeah, of records. Yeah. So the fact that uh, two things, the fact that you're buying straight from the artist gets you a better version if you want. Yeah. Extras and. Uh, it's much better. I mean, iTunes is great. I mean, I don't think it's exclusive. You should have it everywhere you can. I totally you know? agree. Yeah. But uh, I'd definitely rather push for, for I, a private or direct sale from me to well, I, I think that's the other thing about it. Plus, you get that fan connection, which yeah. is obviously valuable to you. And I, the other thing is, like, I was surprised by those numbers, but then when you think through it, it's like, well, it's not like iTunes is putting you on the front page. No. Who's telling people to buy the album? Yeah. You are. Yeah, exactly. And you're choosing where to send them, and you're choosing to send them to your website. So, you know, if yeah. somebody goes and they search, you know, Sonoy on, on iTunes, then then they're finding you, which is great. You yeah, never it's want good that to, to have. It's like having it, like in the old days at the Virgin Mega Store, if you know what you're looking for, or if you're like me, where you go browse on the iTunes Music Store, because... Yeah. You know, you don't know what you want, and you're just looking for new music. You right. might find it and go, I like this. But uh, so far, I haven't found uh, an as, you know, uh, constructive counterpart to having your own campaign on Topspin with iTunes. I don't think there's yet a way for you to promote and build 
your presence on the iTunes store as there is on your own right. site. Just like, you know, and iTunes is literally what the, in a way, what the Virgin Mega store was, but digitally. Yeah. Which is, it's a good thing. I mean, I love the iTunes store. Right. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. it's definitely not something that I can just, I, I can't go inside the Virgin Mega store and set up my little booth and go to people, oh, this is my record. You know what yeah, I mean? It's just, totally. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. Cool, man. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank are you guys there for other qu me. other questions for Alessandro that we should make him answer before he leaves? Um, no one's come up with questions specifically okay. for Alessandro. Okay, cool. Awesome. Um, yeah, it's you, a real man. beard. I know that question will come up. Yes. I'll yeah, the beard, is, the beard is real. Alf's beard is real. Beard is real. Alf's beard is real. Yeah. Um, cool, Just man. for today, I knew it was coming in. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the. Thank you guys for having him. Man. Yeah, man. Always good to see you. I'll, I'll see you in a second. I'll see you guys next week. Hopefully, smiling, not crying. Yeah, exactly.